Hey, what's going on everyone? Brian from Drywall Nation here. Welcome to another educational series in partnership with Level 5 Tools. In this video, we're gonna be showing you how to run your flat boxes on your walls. So I'm just gonna take you through the motions as I get to work here. So again, pumping our flat box, we're moving it side to side to make sure we get a nice even fill. When you're carrying your flat box, you wanna make sure to carry it right under the box itself where the handle meets against the flat box. You don't wanna carry it by the brake. It's really top heavy and it creates unnecessary wear and tear on the brake. So carry it right underneath the box where your handle meets and it's nice and easy to carry that way. Of course, as most of you know, if you're familiar with Drywall Nation, we use butt board on all our jobs. That's why our butt joints aren't staggered. It's a recessed floating joint, so it's structurally superior. We're gonna go ahead and get started on our butt joint. We're gonna start at the bottom. I like starting at the bottom when I'm doing vertical seams because I find it easier to pull off coming from the top down. So I started at the bottom. Now I'm gonna start at the top and pull off at the bottom, leaves a nice small lap mark. Now if you come closer here, you'll take a look. You can see there's little bubbles and pits in my mud. Now this often happens when you're running your flat box. That's why it's good practice to run the box twice. This is called chasing or tracing. So you can see those pits right now. I'm gonna go over it one more time. and that eliminated a lot of those imperfections. So good practice to go over your seams twice. Again, that's called tracing or chasing. Now I'm gonna start at the butt joint, run towards the wall. Finish off that half of the seam and I'm gonna go over the whole thing again and pull off using my brake against the butt joint. So I'm gonna get ready to pull my brake and lift off and you can see our little lap mark right into the butt joint there. So again, we want to eliminate lap marks. So I'm going to pull this off right into the window. So I let go of my brake. We're gonna go forward. As we get closer, I'm gonna pull my brake and lift off so there's no lap marks. What you don't wanna do, again, is go like this and like this and leave a big lap mark in the middle of your wall if it's not necessary. So in this case, it's not necessary because you're not working between two finished walls. So we're gonna start right at the corner, pull off right at the edge, no lap marks. Same thing over here. We're gonna start here, pull off right against the window, start back on this side, pull off right against that window. When working around plugs, make sure not to run right through a plug with your flat box. That's just inconsiderate for the electrician. It just doesn't look good. So we're gonna start right on the edge of that box. We're gonna go that way, get rid of any little papers or chunks of crap we may have picked up along the edge. So if you do that just by wiping your finger along the blade. Now I'm gonna start back against this side and I'm gonna pull the brake right as I get to that box. So you can see we didn't get any mud inside there. Usually what we'll do is we'll come back the next day after this is dry, we'll just use our six inch knife and we'll feather the rest around there. You could, if you wanted to, try to finish it a little bit with the box. That's not too bad there. And we didn't get any inside the mud, any mud inside the receptacle. So same thing here. Don't start at the very edge and go right over your box. It's just not good practice. We're gonna start right on the edge. We're gonna pull up right as we get to that one. So here's a good example. I picked up a little, a little hitchhiker, I called it. I picked up a little piece of paper from that box. And then as I was going across my seam, you could see that very deep groove and you can see the piece of paper is right there along my blade. So if you take your finger and you just get rid of that little piece of paper and go over your seam again, nice and smooth, no lines. If you've been using your box for a few minutes and you notice this things start to dry up, pass a sponge or even a little brush. I usually have a cheap brush like this I pick up from the dollar store. And then when my box starts to dry up, I could just get the sides, make sure there's no dried up mud in there that's gonna affect my finish. Again, we're gonna be doing a vertical joint. This is our butt joint. We use Trimtex butt board, we don't stagger. We're gonna start at the bottom, pull up. I find it's easier to leave my lap mark coming down instead of trying to pull up. So 
do this twice. I can see there's a little line in here. I picked up a little piece of junk in the box. So I'm gonna do the bottom again. Extend my handle. I'm gonna start at the top. Again, picked up a little bit of crap from the wall. Clean my blade. And then pull off at the bottom. It's a lot easier to pull off coming down than it is trying to pull upwards. So you can see nice tight lap mark at the bottom there. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do all the butt joints along this wall. Start at the bottom, working our way up. Start at the top, work our way down. Picked up a little piece of crap, get rid of that. Picked up another little piece of crap. So you can see here, nice thick groove right down the middle of my joint. You can see the culprit right there. Got a little piece of dried up mud or a rock or something that we picked up on the drywall. So now we're gonna go over it again to get rid of that. There we go. Another good tip for first timers, oftentimes people have a hard time judging where the center of their box is uh, in relation to the seam that they're coating. What I like to do, I use the little nut right here that's centered in the middle of the box in the axle, and I kind of use that as a guide. So when I go up, I line up my little nut there with the middle of my tape, and I know that I'm bang on centered with the tape that I'm coating. As you get more and more comfortable running the flat box, you can see just how fast it is. And if you get little chunks of crap in your mud, don't worry about it. Pick it up, flick it off. Where you'll most likely pick up those little chunks of paper, little gravels around your receptacles, around window openings. If you run your box into it, your blade tends to catch those little loose pieces of debris. Something else I haven't mentioned yet, when you're coating walls, make sure you get a nice short handle. Don't have a long 48 inch handle. This is an extendable one, so I love this for anything eight feet and under. This handle gets me through all of those jobs. I can comfortably coat walls. Whenever you're coating walls, you wanna make sure that you're nice and close to the box. That way you can apply very nice, even pressure you're working close to the wall and you're not four feet away. If this was a four foot handle, I'd be working from back here. It's a little harder to leverage properly. So having a nice short handle when you're doing walls, very handy. Every now and then I like to just take my knife very quickly clean the face and then use a sponge or a brush and just kind of clean off the back of my blade so I know there's no dried up mud that's accumulating there. So you can see this is a really tight coat. If you look here, you can see the shoulder on the top and bottom of the board and we have a very thick edge, edge here. So this is because our blade is actually convex right now. It's not concave and that's because we're on four. So. I want to apply a little more mud, so I'm gonna back it off. I'm now on one, which means my blade's a little more concave. If I go over this one more time, you'll see there's a lot more mud on that seam now. So experiment with what settings you're looking for. Don't ask other people what they're running their boxes on. Do what looks right to you and what, what results you want. So you can see this is quite thick. I probably will actually put this on two and pass over it again to take a little bit more mud off because that's probably a little too crowned. But that's the beauty of flat boxes. So now you can see how much mud I have on the face here. That's because I actually took mud off the wall. I wasn't pushing very hard, so it actually took mud off the wall and applied a little bit tighter of a coat. So as you get a little more experienced, you'll be able to do cool stuff like this, like walk around buckets and swerve around plugs. So I'll show you what that looks like. Whoop, whoop. There we go. 
So I hope you enjoyed that quick video on how to run your flat box on walls. For more tips and tricks, make sure to check out our other educational videos with Level 5 Tools. Thanks for watching.